an important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Vasoflux and Vasoflux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaqueout. Plaqueout is made of all natural ingredients proven to help. Dissolve clots in the blood. Remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries. Improve viscosity of the blood. Improve elasticity of the veins and arteries. Treat varicose veins. And prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out. Talik Brown, born June 23rd, 1982. Today's feature in his teens had dreams of following guys like Bob Cousy, Kenny Smith, and Kenny Anderson down the same path that led them to the NBA. He had literally the same upbringing as those guys with the trials and tribulations that come with being a Queens, New York City point guard, but a very different outcome. In high school, Talik was a star basketball player and one of the best young talents in the city and country. He, along with names like previous stunted growth features Omar Cook and Andre Barrett, were expected to restore New York City point guard prominence and continue that fire of what point men from that way brought to the game. While he became an NCAA champion and played professionally for 10 years all over the world, it's a huge visual alteration to the picture most had of his career direction. Why was that? He was just as good a leader as both Kennys, bigger than Barrett, and the only point guard from the city to win a national championship of the four and before Kemba Walker. Here's what I think happened. Salute to Bart Simpson for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Talik Brown is a 6'1 point guard from Left Rack Queens in New York. He grew up watching Smith and Anderson carve NBA paths and wanted to be just like them. He even thought about attending the now famous Archbishop Malloy to play high school ball because he saw those guys do it and because of how much he looked up to Kenny Smith, calling him the godfather of New York basketball. But there was one problem. Malloy is an all-boys school. St. John's Prep, like he eventually chose to attend, as he explains, had girls running around everywhere. That reason tilted the seesaw for Brown and he never looked back, becoming a star for the school and McDonald's All-American by the time his career was done. Stunt number one, mentality. Now walk with me for a second and try to understand this perspective. Most times hard work will not get you to where you want to go. I think people confuse what it means to work hard. It's not just on the basketball court or in the gym. You have to work hard on all aspects of your life because when you're being considered for one of the rarest jobs in the world, everything about you is taken into consideration. Things like having the right mentality to go along with your effort is usually lost in the journey. Like Eddie Jones, for example, I see in the comments a lot of people say that his downfall was that he didn't have the right mentality to dominate you like a Kobe developed, and respectfully, I agree. When looking at all the other point guards that made it from either Queens or from New York, you can see that basketball was their main priority. Not girls or hanging with friends or in some cases even school was sacrificed in order to build the quality scouts would later be evaluating. Talik Brown, in my opinion, had the wrong mentality. And not because he had a thing for females, but because I think he was fine with just making it to one of the best schools for basketball at the time and maybe being able to play overseas when it was all said and done. 
From what I see, he was an extremely hard worker, but not as focused on preparing himself for the NBA as other guys like Karan Butler, who was locked up and had everything taken away from him in high school. Or Ben Gordon, who knew from day one that UConn was just a stepping stone, so worked on things like a jump shot and his handle to be ready when he got there. Brown chose UConn after visits with Jim Calhoun at the campus and at his home and came into a starting role from day one. He stayed all four years there and never averaged at least 10 points a game, never shot more than 25% from three except for a sophomore year where he shot 30% and shot 57% from the foul line over four years, which almost ensures you'll be undrafted. Talik seems like a happy-go-lucky guy that gets along with everyone and always looks out for his friends or teammates and that's admirable. But when you're trying to make a league with 450 jobs and billions waiting their turn to get there, you have to have a more selfish mentality or in the end, your story won't read that you got to the top of the mountain like the ones with said mentality. Stunt number two, shooting. Having the right mentality allows you to focus on things in your game that'll be able to help you down the road and give you a solid shot at making the NBA. If it's one thing I can't stress enough is how far developing an adequate to elite jump shot can take you. You see a guy like Vince Carter, who's known as a high flyer, but played 22 seasons in the NBA. That's 22 years of NBA checks, endorsements, and an opportunity to do what you love, and most times, all you know. His jump shot allowed him to do that. Jason Kidd, Kemba Walker, Shabazz Napier, all developed or had nice jump shots that they worked on to almost perfection and allowed them to get a chance in the league and extend their career. Again, I ask, what is it that historically made this such a difficult concept for New York point guards? Is anyone telling these kids this? Of the important things you need as a point guard, I assure you, ball handling isn't even a top three skill. You have to first be smart, as in extension of the coach, knowing all the plays and where every single player should be at all times. You have to be a good passer, and not all the time that means you get the assist. Sometimes making the hockey assist pass is just as important, but you have to be precise and know where to place the ball and be aware of who you're passing to. Some bigs can't bend to catch a low bounce pass. Some prefer you only throw lobs. Some can't catch at all. Those are the passing attributes you need, and I'll take having a guy that can do that over elite dribbling. Lastly, you have to be able to shoot the ball, especially from the free throw line, because you being the fastest player on the court and able to get open in crunch time, you're going to be the one fouled and put on the line. You also have to be able to keep the defense honest with your deep shooting to open the floor for your teammates and yourself when you're ready to drive it. I'm 100% taking these qualities in a point guard before I take an oohs and ahs guy. You wonder how guys like Tyus and Trey Jones, Peyton Pritchard, Van Fleet and others that aren't the most flashy handlers but knock down open shots are smart and can be trusted to make the right passes at the right time every time make it to the league. It's because of what Talik Brown lacked most. Stunt number three, expiration date. Everyone that picks up a basketball and takes it seriously has one. We're not all going to be LeBron James or aforementioned Vince Carter. Now, that expiration date can be adjusted down and cause you to have a shorter career than that date, hence the name of this channel. In rare cases, you can push your expiration date by being in the right place at the right time and doing the right things. Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Tony Snell, Chandler Parsons, all guys who weren't really expected to last so long, yet here they are signing a new deal. Salute to those guys. But predominantly, we all see a max out point in our journey, and to me, Talik maxed out in high school when it comes to the stats and abilities that matter. In high school, he averaged 22 points a game and 7 assists, was a top 25 national recruit, and a top 3 rated point guard in the state. 
McDonald's All-American, Round Ball Classic MVP in 2000. I mean, what more could you want? In college, his career high scoring was in his sophomore season, averaging nine points a game, and for assists, a career high of six and a half. Now, he did have skills to him that you don't see in a box score that made him a college champion and four-year starter, becoming UConn's all-time leading assist man and only player to score 1,000 points, 1,000 assists, and 700 steals. Things like he was a great leader that you could count on to run the plays for other scorers or to pressure the defense 94 feet. And also, don't get me wrong, he was still a solid passer that could play with all types of bigs. But most times, you don't get credit for that. And because he maxed out in the stats that do matter, he went undrafted in 2004 and began his 10-year overseas journey. He completed his playing journey in 2013 and in the NBL, to which he returned to UConn and is now the Director of Player Development. All in all, Talik Brown is a legend where he's from and had a great basketball experience from the highs of hitting that amazing shot against Pitt to going undrafted and not playing a single game in the league. He's still a great example of how to use your resources and also how to give back, which he does a tremendous job at in his community. Salute to him, nothing but respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, I'm out. Also, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it.